Thank you so much, Div. That was a wonderful talk. Unfortunately, we can't take any questions for, for that one because it has been recorded. Our next speaker is a solutions engineer at SmartBear. So SmartBear is an organization which is all about building quality into our solutions. The tagline is, quality isn't just a goal, it's the whole point. He comes from Melbourne, where he went to Swinburne University of Technology, and then after a number of years working in consulting, focusing on security solutions, he moved into the world of pre-sales, working at organizations we all recognize, like Lexmark and Fujifilm. His current specialization is helping teams deliver quality software, building software quality tools. He's passionate about technology and innovation, contributing to customer success and seeing real world changes. He's going to speak to us today about the role of API standardization and quality in digital acceleration. Please welcome Christoph Sunthorn. Hi, hi everyone. Um, thanks for that introduction, Julia. Uh, good to be here uh, with everyone. So um, yeah, um, good morning to everyone. Um, and I hope everyone's keeping well. Um, yeah, as Julia said, I am Christoph Sunthorn, um, Solutions Engineer at SmartBear, and I do work with customers to improve their testing workflows. And um, again, SmartBear tools are designed to ensure quality across the entire software development lifecycle. Um, and as most of you in the community are probably aware of, um, we at SmartBear, we do currently support three open source initiatives, um, including OpenAPI, um, previously known as Swagger. So, Thank you for joining me today. Um, and today I'll be discussing the role of API standardization and quality in digital acceleration. So uh, I'll go through the agenda for what I'm going to be talking about today first, which is um, APIs and their role in our digitally connected world. Um, and then talk about the challenges in terms of developing APIs and then the importance of API quality uh, during your digital transformation. And then talk about the strategies um, that you can employ to improve that quality. So whether that be through standardization and governance, uh, collaboration, and a shift left test strategy, um, I'll be discussing all of these um, today. So first, I want to start by acknowledging that APIs are the foundation of our digitally connected world. And I would imagine that most of you would at least somewhat agree with that statement, given you are here at API Days Melbourne today. Um, as we know, APIs allow applications and devices to talk to one another. Um, this enables us to develop new processes and innovations which can help improve our lives and keep us connected, um, as we've seen in the past year. Um, we've also seen the acceleration of digital transformations. Um, and Bloomberg has actually said that every company uh, is now an e-commerce company. You can see some examples of this um, on the slide, um, how internet interconnected our world is. So from our Zoom meetings um, while we're working from home to smartphones, um, online banking services, digital supply chains, uh, to even Google Maps in our cars. Um, most of these technologies that we use in our day-to-day -day lives are all made possible with APIs. So APIs are essential to ensuring the connections of our applications. This also means that API quality is essential to ensure that our applications work um, and it should be a mission critical consideration during any digital transformation. So now this brings me to talking about API development challenges um, and why do these challenges matter? Um, again, it's because they impact the quality of your APIs. So, while we've been working with customers, um, we've heard a few common challenges come up. So some of these are that the developed APIs failed to meet the original business goals, even though there was an agreement on the design. Now, this might be due to uh, lack of collaboration um, along the process or just poorly defined goals. Another is 
is that uh, as a designer, it's difficult to get feedback during API, the API development lifecycle, um, or that there isn't a source of truth on the API definition. Um, you know, there might be different um, team members that have a different version of an API definition across um, the, the organization. So um, not only different, um, different versions among different uh, team members, um, but also uh, different revisions uh, among those team members throughout the organization. So just worth noting that as well. We're also hearing that uh, quality issues are hurting adoption. And this really makes sense um, because if your API is not giving an acceptable response time or even giving the correct responses, um, then it's less likely to be chosen and relied upon. And lastly, uh, creating API documentation from scratch is time consuming uh, and error prone, uh, which is likely connected to the fact that with more, that with more APIs being created, um, the more they're becoming inconsistent and difficult to understand and support. So this is especially relevant um, in, in our time right now after the pandemic, um, with most organizations uh, being rushed into digital transformation initiatives without a greater consideration of a holistic API strategy that will support um, future business models organically. So without proper documentation, uh, it's difficult to adapt your APIs, uh, both internally um, and externally. So consumers won't know how to integrate your APIs um, into their applications. And this certainly won't help um, when there's much more choice um, in today's API ecosystem. So to understand these challenges better, um, as part of our State of API report in 2020, um, so SmartBear surveyed over uh, 1,500 API practitioners and customers um, from a wide range of industries. And we learned that the top challenges here um, are standardization, versioning, security, and easier um, integration between tools. So the report shows that standardization continues to be the top challenge that organizations want to solve. Um, and it has more than doubled in importance since 2016. Um, the same can be said for versioning. The, also the growth um, in importance of these two challenges um, actually shows us that with the industry taking on digital transformations uh, and the move towards microservices architecture, that more APIs are being created. And this raises the difficulty in maintaining um, consistency. And so really all of these challenges will impact the quality of our APIs. So then let's talk about the importance of API quality within um, digital transformation itself. So let's first start off by talking about why is quality important? Well, um, one reason here is that it impacts uh, API consumer loyalty. So when consumers run into quality or performance issues with third-party APIs, they report the problem and then look at their options. This is what we saw in our survey report. So compared to previous years, there's a trend that API consumers are less loyal to the APIs they work with when faced with performance issues. In 2016, uh, only 30% of respondents said that an issue would lead them to look for a permanent alternative API provider. Their instinct instead was to review service level agreements. However, in the years since, service level agreements have decreased and the willingness of consumers to look elsewhere has increased to 34% in 2019 and 37% in 2020. Um, so with COVID, we haven't had a chance to run the survey in 2021, but we can sort of see the trend um, forming here. So that brings us to why are API consumers less loyal? It's likely a result of more competition in API marketplaces, plus a high demand on API reliability as tools and systems become more connected and dependent. 
Downtime of a third-party API can also translate directly to lost revenue because of poor experience for consumers um, and the services they offer. Aside from customer loyalty, poor quality or poor functioning APIs within an organization can result in interrupted business operations, data corruption, um, security breaches, or even downtime. Um, and when siloed business units can't work together uh, in a larger business process, this also stifles innovation and efficiency um, internally. So we can see that quality is essential with APIs. And now this is where we can talk about standardization and how that can help. So we'll discuss now some strategies that you can employ in your API development framework to improve the quality of your API. So this is where the value of the API definition comes in um, to help with standardization. So the definition helps define and describe the features and behaviors of the API to be designed. Now, the best way we can think of an API definition um, is as a blueprint for your house. So if we think about that example, um, it would be pretty unconventional to start building walls and windows to your house without knowing if there was going to be a, a toilet or a sink in the way um, in the future. So it makes more sense to plan the design and agree on the design before we start construction. The same concept can be applied to API development. Um, now in the real world, it's unlikely that we finalize an API design um, and no further changes are made um, during the development, but having a definition can certainly go a long way in keeping consistent and always understandable design philosophy. One industry standard for defining RESTful APIs is the Open API Specification, uh, formerly known as Swagger, um, which is also supported by SmartBear. It allows end users to understand how to consume and adopt your APIs. And it's also language agnostic um, and readable by both humans and machines. Now, one benefit of API definitions is that is sometimes um, what's forgotten is you have the ability to have parallel work streams. So I mentioned um, in the agenda that I would talk about the shift left test strategy. So this is where this comes in. So with your API definition, you can start building test cases and create virtual web services um, all before your coding starts. This ensures that testing for quality starts earlier uh, within your API development lifecycle and helps reduce that um, release cycle time. So I talked a little bit about design before, um, but let's dive a bit deeper on why it matters. So consistency in API design is not always a given. Um, we need to think if your organization is currently a code first or design first shop, and do your current processes enforce a style guide or not? Uh, if we go back to my example before of the build or code first approach, it's more costly to make changes after the API has already been built um, and coded. However, however, if we move to uh, towards a design first approach, uh, which is more collaborative, where we involve all stakeholders uh, from business analysts to testers and consumers, we can get a clearer picture of our requirements before we start building. So the advantage here is that we identify any changes to the design early uh, in the process, and this is a lot more time and cost effective to implement at the design stage rather than having to go back and make changes once a code has been implemented. So at the end of the day, um, for APIs, for the API to be successful, uh, it needs to meet most of the stakeholders' goals. And without a focus on API design standards, it's difficult to create a consistent API consumer experience. So another point is that API adoption is tied to consistent design. So if an API is to be used, consumers need a guide to help them understand it. So what is the data um, that the API is providing? What functionality is it providing? 
what are the protocols, what are the um, authentication schemes, and so forth. So you can have a great API, but if people don't understand how to use it, um, people just won't use it. They'll look for something better, something more reliable. Um, and especially with the API marketplace out there right now, there is plenty of choice uh, at the moment. So let's summarize um, the strategies uh, to improve quality through standardization and governance. So we need to focus on gathering input from all stakeholders to ensure API design uh, aligns to the business purpose. So uh, this involves talking to you know, business analysts, um, business leaders, um, the API consumers, your partners, making sure that um, we all have a common goal um, and that we know what's expected um, out of the API. We also need to um, focus on a design first uh, approach rather than a code first approach. However, um, realistically, we know that a lot of organizations are right now sort of in a hybrid um, sort of phase, a transitioning phase. Um, so it, it's important to, I guess, have that vision in mind um, or direction in mind um, if you're looking to move towards a design first approach um, and um, just take the, the natural steps as the organization and your teams build the capability um, over time to move towards a divine, design first and holistic API approach. We also need to focus on leveraging um, a single source of truth for API definitions. Um, and what this does is it allows for, again, consistency um, and also for reusability within the organization. So if um, one team within the business has built some functionality within the, and within an API, we don't want that to go to waste. Um, and if it's in one sort of hub, um, we can always search for that capability and other areas of our organization, um, all partners or consumers can access this uh, functionality um, without extra work or reinventing the, the wheel. We also need to um, focus on utilizing an API style guide um, as an initial step towards governance. So um, when we talk about consistency and governance, um, what we need is a style guide to ensure that um, we can set some rules um, in terms of the development of the APIs. Um, otherwise, you might have one team that has a preference um, for a certain style of development and another team has a different style and then um, it gets very difficult as you scale up the number of APIs within your organization. Um, so we really need a holistic approach to this. And similarly, we need to leverage custom rules to validate open API definitions for compliance with API design guidelines, just as I mentioned before. And lastly, um, we really need to understand the entire API workflow um, to ensure uh, the best quality um, in the end. So in summary, um, really today, uh, I wanted to emphasize that APIs are the foundation of our digitally connected world and that API quality is really important to your digital transformation. And the reason for that is because it heavily impacts on the adoption of your APIs, both within your organization internally, but also externally with your partners and consumers. Um, so whether you're, I guess, if, if your business model is, um, you know, partners subscribing to your API service, um, adoption is gonna be really important. API quality also impacts on business operation downtime and revenue lost not to mention um, uh, security um, risks involved um, with uh, poor quality APIs. And also um, having the ability to adapt to new business models. Because if you have poor quality APIs and you don't really have an API strategy, um, what happens is you're more likely to have a, an ad hoc approach. And this is when, um, when you need to adapt to new business models, it really, is difficult um, because you'll be going through 
let's say, old API documentation, um, and then trying to figure out how to um, build these new capabilities. Um, whereas if um, the API quality um, was built in mind um, and you had a single source of truth where all your developers and your teams can review that, then um, it's a lot easier to uh, build new capabilities uh, based off your existing um, base of capabilities. So in summary, we want to improve the quality through standardization and governance. Um, so making sure that uh, your team sticks to um, certain rules um, to ensure that consumers um, are able to easily understand um, how to consume your API. And then we also need to improve quality through collaboration with stakeholders, as I mentioned, to make sure that um, all the requirements um, are understood from the beginning and we don't develop something that is off the mark in the end, which will end up taking um, more resources to fix afterwards. And then improving quality through a shift left uh, test strategy, especially with the pace of development these days, um, we really need to um, try and do more parallel testing when, when available, and you can do that through API specifications without even having the API ready. And then you can also virtualize those APIs, um, which means that you're able to have the test cases ready to go as soon as the API uh, has been developed, um, but also to reduce that uh, testing time bottleneck um, within the API lifecycle. Um, so that's really important. So I think the final message for me here is that um, it's important to have a holistic API first strategy um, focused on quality because that will support a more sustainable dig digital transformation rather than a uh, ad hoc um, just reacting to um, sort of uh, immediate um, business um, needs. So maybe you might need a, a mobile app right now which forces you into uh, building an API. Um, th that's fine in the short term, but long term, we really need a holistic API um, strategy that is focused on quality to ensure that this digital transformation, which isn't going away, um, is sustainable. So thank you um, for listening to um, some of our discussion points on the importance of quality within um, APIs um, and digital transformation. So. Yeah, I'll just open open it up to any questions um, that you might have. Thank you so much for that um, talk, Christoph. That was fantastic. And yes, just send any questions through and, and we can take them. We've got a little bit of time. Um, there's a few come through already, Christoph. So the first one I'd like to ask you is, what challenges do companies face moving from a code first to a design first approach? Yeah, so the, the biggest challenge there that we've come across is it's a it's more of an organizational um, change rather than a technical change um, it, it's more of a cultural um, a transition um, on the technical side um, obviously most developers are comfortable with um, how they're developing especially if they're, they're going code first um, so it's going to take a, a lot of um, I guess, convincing, but also making sure that the tools that you put in place um, will support that workflow um, towards a design first approach. But yeah, the biggest challenge here is a, a cultural change within the team. And that's not an overnight um, overnight thing. That's um, That takes some time. Yeah, that, that, that does take some time. That's always the harder piece, isn't it? Um, there's a question around API workflow. So as you talk about understanding what the API workflow is, could you share a little more on what that means? Yeah, so with the API workflow, um, that would be talking about, I guess, the workflow in terms of development within your organization um, from uh, beginning to end, so the, the life cycle. Um, now, I think I might have a slide, um, so I'll just um, have a look here. Let's see if I can show you something. Okay, no, I don't think I have a slide at the moment, but uh, 
Sí. So. Yeah, so um, with this slide here, um, it's, a, it's a bit um, messy uh, at the moment, but um, I have another um, slide, um, just not within this slide deck, which I can share with anyone that's interested afterwards to show what it might look like for a um, developer um, from beginning to end, um, especially working with API uh, specifications um, and then how that integrates with your source control um, and any CI tools that you have um, and your testing teams um, getting involved as well. Um, so that's what I mean by API workflow. Um, that sort of needs to be, again, it's, it's a cultural thing um, that depends on um, working with multiple teams. So not just developers, you're working with the QA team, um, but also um, the, the BA team, um, so you all need to come together and see how you fit together in that workflow of that API um, life cycle. This is really a whole of organisational, isn't it? Like get everybody together to look at that change. So yeah, one more question. Yeah. Yep. Why do you think that companies are still talking about digital transformation? Aren't we already there? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, we've been talking about, it seems like we've been talking about digital transformation for quite a long time, and especially um, in the past year with um, the pandemic around the world. Um, however, we're seeing that um, businesses are still adapting to this new world, um, and so that means they need to keep adapting their business models. Um, and that's why there's, I think there was a report showing that there's increased um investment within digital transformation initiatives um, uh, to this date uh, because of that. Um, so really, digital transformation is an ongoing journey, um, which is why I mentioned that it's really important to have a holistic um, API first strategy um, based on quality, um, because that one will be more sustainable and will allow you to I guess, adapt to any new um, business changes that come along. Um, because if you understand um, what you have in your organization um, and you know your, 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 your pathway, um, you'll be able to just build on that and pivot really quickly rather than scrambling to um, adapt just um, ad hoc built APIs um, that you've just cobbled together to you know, bring out a mobile app, uh, for example. So, yeah. So your principle of design first applies way more broadly than just to building an API. It's like you've got to design the whole digital transformation, really, and know where you're going. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So shift left has been a bit of a mantra for a while. Um, what's well, starting to be, you're hearing it more and more. Do you see more organisations heading this way? And um, what challenges or resistance do you see them experiencing? Yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing um, shift left a lot more, um, but it, it, has, it has been around for a while. And normally we think of it as something for smaller teams, um, but we're starting to see a lot more larger organisations um, take on this principle now um, because they're able to see the benefits in terms of the um, reduced uh, release cycle times um, and also being able to catch those bugs early on within the development life cycle. Um, and so that reduces a lot of, of effort. Um, so it, it is something that is coming up quite a lot. And with the automation tools that are available these days, um, it, it is possible um, to implement that. Um, it's just a matter of, um, I guess, having, having the right champions within the organization to support that um, initiative um within the QA team um, because it it can be quite easy to to get stuck in the, the old ways of just continually um let's say performing manual testing um or um just testing later on in the phase after everything's complete um but there are tools available now um as we've seen that will allow you to do more parallel testing 
or move it um, a lot earlier. And is your recommendation that it starts right up front, so before the APIs are built, test against stubs and, um, you know, start getting that test suite going as you're building the code? Yeah, absolutely, because what that means then is um, your QA team can start um, building the test case um, before the API is complete. And then once the API is complete, um, the testing time is dr drastically reduced because the, the test case is already there um, and it can also be, you know, part of a continu continuous integration pipeline as well. That's all um, automated um, as part of your build process. So, um, yeah, it makes a lot of sense um, today, especially when, um, yeah, we need releases ASAP. Things are changing um, too quickly these days. Absolutely right. Thank you so much, Christoph. That was just a very interesting talk and it's been wonderful having you here with us today at API Days. You're welcome. I'm good cool. to be here. Thank you. Thank you.